gamers? I'm Julie. I'm Jason. And today on Dice and Dragons, we are switching things up. Yes, one of the reasons we're doing this is Julie's most recent video, her list of... Uh, the top competitive games for the cooperative gamers. Yes. So today, Jason is bringing you the top cooperative games for the competitive gamer. Yes, this is gonna be a top 10 list. And before you, we have my honorable mention. And for those of you that are wondering why this is not on the list, quite simply, I have not played it enough. I've only got a chance to play it one time, but I had so much fun with this, and this is known to be one of the best cooperative games out there. It is Spirit Island. Now, one of the reasons why I had to get this on the list in some way, shape, or form is just how challenging it is. The fact that all of the spirits have different asymmetric powers. It's almost impossible to have a quarterback, and it also means that you will really need to work together to learn different strategies which is something that I know a lot of competitive gamers love, figuring out the best strategies in order to win the game. That's gonna change up depending on your combination of spirits. It just had to be on the list. So there you have it, it is my honorable mention. Now Julie's gonna take it away and bring out, uh, well, I'll take it away, and we will bring out number 10, where we shall begin our list. Now, I may be Vanna, but I cannot play Jason in the sense that he knows who all the publishers and designers, so he'll have to intro his own game. Yes, and apologies, I do not know the designer of Spirit Island, but it was published by, well, it's still published by Greater Than Games. Now here we've got The Lord of the Rings Journeys in Middle-Earth, published by Fantasy Flight Games, and designed by Nathan Hadjik and Grace Holdinghouse. I have, well, we have reviewed this game One quite a bit. One of my a, favorites. Yes quite a few times, and it made the list because it is our most played game. Now, why do I think competitive gamers are going to enjoy The Lord of the Rings? Well, this is not a combat-based game. It is really all about exploration and the experience of going on an adventure. It is definitely taking you on different journeys through the realm of Middle-earth. And if you're a Tolkien fan, it captures the spirit of the books very well. Now. Does have one issue? Make sure you play with Barevor as Pathfinder. Almost messed that up for your first game. Other than that, we've had a lot of fun with the game, and I think that anyone that loves storytelling and being drawn into a world of token will enjoy this game. So let's keep going. Our number nine. Apologies, Jason likes heavy games. <laughs> well, we have. Descent, Journeys in the Dark. This one is designed by Corey Konitzka, if I'm not mistaken, based on a design by Kevin Wilson. This is the second edition of Descent. Now, this did not start out as a cooperative game, but it's on the list because that's the way that, well, it's the only way that we have played this game. Now, why do I love the game? Well, you do have the app, which lets you play multiple campaigns, and you've got quite a few on there. I believe there is four or five. You also have the Delve, which lets you play just any scenario that is uh, in the app. And there's a lot of them. Every expansion will unlock new content for the game. Also, this game has a special place for us. If it wasn't for it, I don't think we'd still be doing the channel. It probably would have died when Sammy G decided to leave. But this showed us that we love gaming together and has led to everything around you. So this had to make my list. The game also does have some cooperative expansions that are not in the app. And if you really do love the game, you can also find the Red Jack mods on Board Game Geek to let you automate just about everything for the game. So Descent, Journeys in the Dark, second edition. This has to be one of our favorite games and something that I promise, because I don't think we've done it, it will get reviewed in 2021 in some way, shape, or form on the channel. We've got at least a Nericol to finish. So standing in for the big box is one of the expansion boxes for Street Masters. Now, this is a game where uh, Julie- So who is it made by? Yes, by Blacklist Games, designed by Brady and Adam Sadler. See, she's got to rein me in. She's doing a good job. That's, that's her my task. My Vanna White job. Yes, keeping Pat Sajak in line. <laughs> so why did I pick Street Masters? Well, I grew up on beat-em-up video games 
and this is a beat em up board game. Now, it is very challenging, especially if you decide not to use any allies. You're going to need your play, play your cards perfectly, combo everything together in order to beat all of the different minions and defeat the boss who can have a ridiculous amount of health, especially if you have a lot of players. And what I also really enjoy about the game is if you're playing it at higher player counts, you're all gonna be doing different things. You can have players that are manipulating the board and supporting the other fighters by stunning minions and keeping them away from the bot while the other players can handle potentially the objectives in the different stages. So you really do get a feel of playing an old school video game, which I know a lot of gamers have done and always enjoy the MDS system and the complexity that it brings. Now there are a few other MDS games we've played Brook City, but we want to start with the original one, Street Masters, for this list. So where are we at now? We've gone to number eight, so we're on... Number seven. Now, number seven is Black Orchestra. I'm gonna cheat right now because, well, I've got the name on the back, so it is a cooperative game by Philip DuBerry, and it is published by Game Salute. It, this is not at the table for a while, but, and you may be wondering why a game that I don't think Julie's gonna have much to say about it. She's not the biggest fan of the game, why I would pick it. Well, it is historically accurate in terms of the events that are occurring in the game because you're taking on the roles of Germans who are attempting to assassinate Hitler during World War II. So if you did see the movie Valkyrie, you are taking on the roles of, uh, well, not the roles, the actual roles of the people that tried to bring down Hitler. While they were unsuccessful, you have the chance to bring him down. So with that historical aspect of the game, it's really engrossing, brings you into the game. Everyone needs to work together. You can't really have uh, an alpha dog in this one as well. And this has to be the, one of the only games where a few people had to leave before we actually completed the game and they were messaging me like when they got home, they're like, did you do it? Did you be a Hitler? And everyone that I've played this with has asked to get it back to the table again as soon as possible. Well, Except for me. Yeah. I don't know why. Is it just the theme that doesn't do it for you? I just didn't enjoy it. Well, so Black Orchestra, it is a great game. And if you love World War II and you want a chance to bring down Hitler in a way that's not uh, having your armies clash with uh, the Axis powers, well, this is the one for you. And then, so we've got number six, and after this we're gonna be taking a quick cut, and I'm drawing a blank on the designer right now. We've got some great designers. Don't worry, it'll pop up somewhere on screen afterwards, but this is Folklore the Affliction by Greenbrier Games. Now, this one we have to add to the list. Like, well, I have to add uh, to it. It's your list. <laughs> yes. As it's Second to Journeys in Middle-earth. Now, actually, I think in terms of the cooperative game that has spent the most time on the table. And if you're a fan of any type of role-playing game, if you played Dungeons & Dragons, a tabletop role-playing game, this does a fantastic job of simulating the role-playing game in a box. You get an open world that if you do have the rumor cards and some other elements from the expansions, you don't actually need to be playing through the campaign. You can just literally quest around the world level up your character, and go on all these really cool adventures. So for that awesome storytelling element, the fact that it captures the RPG aspect of building your character the way you want, picking your class, leveling up, buying equipment, getting signature skills, it's just one of the games that we've had the most fun with, and we actually have, I think, three expansions left to play for this, and uh, if it wasn't for... Uh, the year known as 2020, I'm sure we would have started the Dark Tales expansion by now, but uh, we'll have to see if things have changed and maybe we'll just have to t start Follow the Spire on our own. Wait for some other players for Dark Tales, but Folklore the Affliction was a big hit with uh, a lot of players. Well, not a lot, but the two people that uh, we, played with. we played with. And I don't know, how many hours did it take for us to get through this? I, I don't even know. <laughs> uh... A lot of hours, but no one wanted to stop. Everyone was always saying, when's the next session? Let's continue. The story is engrossing and it's a better story in terms of bringing players into the game world than Journeys in Middle Earth. So there you have it. You've heard the bottom five games from the list. So we're going to take a quick cut. We're going to get set up and I'm going to be bringing you my top five cooperative games for the competitive gamer.
And we're back for Jason's uh, top 10 list of the best cooperative games for the competitive gamer. And now we're at number five. Yeah, so here we've got Marvel Champions, the card game. Why is this number five? Well, I really love the game. We have a lot of fun. I think it's getting close to, and this might be our second most played game now. And no, we just said second most plays before. So this is what, third? Well, number of plays, Folklore definitely is the second most played in terms of time. Okay. Yes, clarification right there. We love the game. The ability to build your own decks is something that most competitive gamers will be familiar with, especially if you do like deck building games. Now deck construction does take place outside of the game itself. It is done before you actually uh, start playing. So if you are a fan of trading card games, well, this living card game will give you that aspect of collecting different cards, building the best deck that you're gonna have to take on the villains. Also, the aspect of working together in this game is a lot of fun. Just the way that you can use your own cards to help out other players. How you can also use some of the power-ups and boosts to really work together in order to defeat the enemies means that it's a game that's going to be a lot of fun. Everyone plays differently, so there's not going to be one person that's going to take control of the game. And the fact that if, you know, multiple people in your group do have the game, or even if they just have some of the expansions because you're always gonna be playing together, they can really customize their own set of cards to bring a unique flair as to what they're gonna be doing in every game. And we just really enjoy it, I enjoy it. And I do know a lot of competitive gamers that do already have this in the collection. And I don't think that anyone that is also a Marvel fan will go wrong. I do believe this is the best Marvel game on the market, bar none, right now. I'll agree with that one. All right, so let's move on to number four. Now we've talked about this one. Oops, another heavy game. <laughs> trying to be a good Vanna, but Jason's making it hard. Yes, so we have CO2 Second Chance by Vital Lacerda. And I'm surprised this game is still in our collection. Julie and I have had quite a few arguments while playing the game, but that just goes to show you how challenging it is. It now, is a brain burner. Yes, it is. Now, if you're great at math, well, you can actually math out the solution in the first few rounds because Vital is great at creating these intricate puzzles that are mathematically solvable. The game is also a semi-cooperative game. This is the second edition of CO2 that brings out the full cooperative version of the game. And he really wanted to do that because uh, from what I've heard about the semi-co-op is it can be very challenging and people prefer just working together in order to win as a group. The other reason why I really like this is it is a brain-burning Euro, as Julie already pointed out, something that most competitive gamers are very familiar with, except this time you're all working together, and if you screw up, well, you all lose together. You also have the option, if there's that person in your group that just really doesn't want to cooperate, well, guess what? The rest you can cooperate and win without him in the semi-cooperative mode. So I just think that it fits perfectly on the shelf of a competitive gamer because the two modes means you'll be able to get it to the table no matter who you have sitting at the table with you. Well, unless they just hate uh, brain, brain burners. burners. <laughs> yeah, or hate euros. So let's move on to number three. <clears throat> Excuse me, talking so much, need to clear my throat. Not used to talking so much anymore, huh? Hey. We gotta share responsibilities on the channel. You got to take the lead, now it's my turn. So here we've got Aeons and Legacy. Now, why did I pick Legacy? In all honesty, this spot is reserved for the Aeons and series. I picked Legacy because it is the only game in the series that actually introduces the mechanics piecemeal. So because of that, Julian, I feel it is a great starting point to get into Aeons End. We started with Legacy. We now have all of Aeons End. And the reason why we selected it is because this game is not easy. It is- You selected, it is your list. Sorry, the reason why we love it, I shouldn't yes. say selected, yes. why we love it is it is not easy. This is a challenge. You have to work together. The more players you have playing the game, the harder the game will get because the way it works is you alternate turns. When you're playing with two players, you're gonna have a higher chance of building up your mage in, the, in that one round before you reshuffle the turn order deck. It's also great for competitive gamers because of the challenge and the fact that you are fighting to beat the boss. This captures 
elements of video games, those epic boss fights, things like Shadows of the Colossus where you're just fighting bosses. If you enjoy doing that, then you're gonna enjoy teaming up with your friends and doing this in a board game. That's what you get from Aeon's End. It's got a great story as well. Unfortunately, it's a little bit piecemeal out. It's hard to put together. I'd love it if they put out a wiki or even a book at some point to follow it. But there is so much Aeon's End content that if you dive into the system and you love it, you'll be able to get it to the table on a regular basis and pretty much never duplicate your game if you don't want to. So let's move on to number two. I actually have to get up for this one. <laughs> So number two is Imperial Assault. Now this, this was gonna be the number one on my list, but I thought about it and decided that it belonged in the number two slot because- the penultimate space. Yes, because it was not designed first and foremost as a cooperative game. Now it was announced very shortly after it came out that they would be doing an app like they have for Descent to make it co-op instead of releasing cooperative missions. And if you do wanna play the entire system cooperatively, including the campaigns that have not yet been put into the app. Well, there's Red Jack's uh, automated Imperial cards that you can find on Board Game Geek. We'll have linked to, the, to those uh, down below in the video description as well as the Descent ones. So because of that, it just did not earn the top slot. We have played every campaign. We've had a ton of fun with this game. This is the game that taught Julie that she doesn't like just being a sniper. I like being a Wookiee. Yes. What do you do when you're a Wookiee? Mm, I'm not even going there. <laughs> by the way, did you tell everybody who uh, this game is by? So this game, ah, I only forgot it for Aeon's End as well. Oh. So this game is by Fantasy Flight Games and it is also designed by Corey Konitska. We got some help on the top, Justin Kampanen and Jonathan Yang. And I do love Jonathan Yang's most recent cooperative game, Power Rangers. But it's not on the list, don't worry, that's not a spoiler for number one. So let's jump back to Aeons and Legacy, which is designed by Indie Boards and Cards. And I'm drawing a blank to the designer. Don't worry, it'll, it'll have popped up during the, uh, during the video. But he's done all the games. I'm, I think it's Kevin Little, but in any case, continue on. The other reason why this is the second slot on the list, well, you also have the one versus many mode, like the Sand, and you also have the head-to-head -head battle mode. So if you do like tactical miniatures game, you're essentially getting three games in one box, co-op, one versus many, tactical game. You're not gonna go wrong if you like Star Wars, if you like epic adventures, if you like dungeon crawls, and you also wanna beat up your friends from time to time, well, Imperial Sock, covers all aspects That's one of, the of my list. favorite favorite moments yes well go ahead and tell the story because this is your story not my story well it's a long story so i won't but we were playing against the cyber bard and he thought he had us beat and it was like a a one in a million chance probably not one in a million but it felt like it i had to have the perfect dice roll and i rolled it to his dismay he just couldn't believe it I still just kind of like how luke took out the death star that <laughs> one shot so here, let's go do the number one game on the list. I'm going off camera to pick it up. <laughs> it is a beast. Yes. So Cthulhu Death May Die is my number one cooperative game for the competitive gamer. Now this is published by Simon Games, designed by Rob Davio and Eric Lang. Now, why is this the number one game? We have had so much fun with this game. It's honestly hasn't come back to the table for a while. We've been busy playing new games, but I really was upset when I backed this game. I was like, why did I back it? Why did I go all in? Can't quite see it, but we've got the statue over there. There's well, pictures actually, on I was our, gonna say, there's pictures on Instagram. Yeah, there's pictures on the our, social. With our little man. Yeah, there's pictures on the social media, but every person that we have played this with has had a blast. The stories that we have about the game are things that we remember. One of our games, our first win actually, my character had to commit suicide, leading all the monsters away so that the rest of the investigators had a chance to defeat the great old one. And you just get these crazy emergent stories that come out about your investigators, the things that they do in every play. Now, I've also took this out with some peoples from the West Island Gamer Group who are 
I would say harsh critics, and uh, they hate Zombicide, they hate other cooperative games. When this came out, everyone said, this is fun. This is like a perfected, great version of Zombicide. They're like, we definitely play it again. I've had basically one person complain about it, and the only reason why they complained is because they went insane and died, which, you know what? I told them, it's a Cthulhu game. It's going to happen, and we still won, so what are you complaining about? He just didn't get to make his final attack. So Cthulhu Death May Die came out right after, well, we received it right after we did our top 10 game list last year. I think this might have been in the number one spot if we'd actually had it on time. I don't know. The way we did our top 10, it might not have been in the number one, but it would have been on the list. It probably would have been in the top three because we'd had a blast with it recently. So in any case, Cthulhu Death May Die, our number one game for, well, number one cooperative game for the competitive gamer. So there you have it. You have Jason's list. I uh, hope you liked it. As always, uh, like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell to be notified when we have some new content for you. Yeah, bell's over here, by the way. <laughs> We'd love to hear what you have to say. Uh, let us know if you'd like more content like this, if you have any suggestions for any other uh, content lists uh, from us. Well, we will be having probably our top games played in 2020 coming out sometime early in 2021. We did get a request to do our top 10 licensed games. So games based on things like Power Rangers, Firefly, Terminator. X-Files. X-Files. Marvel. <laughs> yes. So that list will be coming as well in, well, maybe by the end of the year, maybe 2021. We haven't decided, but it will be coming soon. Also, if you agree with the list, let me know down below in the comments. If you disagree with the list, let me know down below in the comments. I'd love to hear your thoughts on any of the games on the list. And if you'd like to see us play or review any of the games that haven't been reviewed yet, like Spirit Island and Descent, I actually think those are the only two, also let us know. We'd love to get those videos done. Julie would really love an extra reason to get Descent back out to the table. She keeps talking about it. I think the only reason why it hasn't come back out is we have some big co-op campaign games. So she's like, well, it's scratching my itch a little bit. Am I wrong? Am I wrong? No, no. Don't want to speak for you. So <laughs> popping up in front of me is a link to well, our most... Before that, take a look down below in the video description to take a look at all of the pictures of these games that we have on our social media feeds, as Facebook. Well as links to our previous reviews. Yes, well, yeah, the links will be down there as well. <laughs> She's making me add that. I wasn't going to add it this time. I'm doing it. So yes, pictures on our social media feeds, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, it's all there. And then go ahead, Julie, tell them what videos are going to be popping up. Our most recent review will be right here. And popping up in front of Jason will be the review of... Well, we did review this, right? Yeah. So we could have a review. You know what? Nah. Let's take it back to your list. It'll be okay. Julie's top 10 co competitive games for the cooperative gamer. You know what? There's both C's in both of them. It's easy to make mistakes. Okay. okay. All right. So what do we have to remind everyone to do now? We're going to remind everybody to keep playing games. Keep playing games.